Hello again and welcome back to the Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and this video I'm going to do a bit of a follow-up to uh, like an interview video that I did a few weeks ago where I had the opportunity to sit down and have a, a good long chat with John Tron Davidson from the Heavy Repping Plectrum blog about the very humble, very often overlooked but equally very important Plectrum. Uh, if you haven't seen that video already, uh, I'd advise you do so. It's really interesting. You might think, oh, what, two guys talking about plectrums for an hour? Yeah, really, there's an awful lot, uh, awful lot in there. I think you'll find it quite interesting, so I'll put a link to that in the information section down there. What I thought I'd do in this video, though, is talk a little bit about sort of like my personal plectrum journey and different picks that I've used over the years. Uh, because something that we picked up on uh, during that, that discussion I had with John was if you if you you're just looking on the internet, you can get specs for a plectrum, but a plectrum is like it's your interface to the guitar. It's very tactile, it's you know it's in contact with your with your picking hand. So just saying, you know, oh, it's made out of this plastic, it's quite stiff, it's made out of a different type of material, it's it's a little bit more flexible. It doesn't give you that much. So I thought I'll talk a little bit about the about picks that I've used, why I like them, why I perhaps didn't like them, moved on to something else perhaps guide you through what you want to uh, to look for in a pick and kind of give you that bit of appreciation that picks are really important and possibly need a bit more thought than you're giving them currently. So let's kick off. This is the pick that I first started, well it's not this particular pick but it's it's a one that they still make so I bought another one. It's a Jim Dunlop nylon pick. Now when I first started playing the guitar I didn't know anything about picks or anything so I just I bought something which I thought was going to do the job. Um, nylon quite a soft material it's one millimeter thick but it's got a little bit of a little bit of give to it. Oh in terms of the gear I'm using I'm using my Fender Custom Shop 1955 Strat going into the clean channel on the amp with a little bit of hair coming from a, a Frederick Effect Golden Eagle a little bit of delay and reverb nothing overpowering um, so this is how it sounds with the one millimeter Dunlop nylon pick. So that pick, particularly after the sort of thing I'm playing nowadays, it's got a bit more give to it. Um, it's quite a soft tone on the strings, just kind of what I'm hearing in the room might not come across so much on the, the amplified sound. But generally I, I, do, I don't particularly care for nylon picks. Now on my personal pick journey, I quite quickly switched from using nylon to using um, like a black uh, medium celluloid pick from one of the one of the Gibson ones. Basically, at the time I was still at school, I didn't have a whole lot of money, but I discovered for pocket money you could get, you could buy picks, you could kind of change things up a little bit. And basically, I bought uh, one of these because it had the Gibson logo on. Couldn't afford a Gibson guitar, but I could afford a Gibson uh, Gibson pick. Now I don't have a Gibson uh, celluloid pick right now, but I do have one from uh, Planet Waves. So this is basically the same thing. It's uh, what I call a medium gauge, so it's. 0.7 millimeter again quite a flexible pick um, different sort of material though it's a, it's a slightly harder material uh, sounds like this So again, I was one I don't particularly care for now because it's got a quite a lot of give to it. Um, I, I prefer a, 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 a thicker um, plectrum now, one that doesn't have quite so much bend. And I think there's a reason why that works for me. It wasn't until I talked to, to John that I realized why a thicker pick works better for me. And I'll talk a little bit about that when I get onto the thicker picks. So that was kind of like the second pick on my journey. It was like the medium celluloid. Quite quickly though, I switched up to one of these. So this is the 0.96 millimeter Dunlop 500 series Delrin. Now Delrin is a bit like a uh, Tortex in that it's intended to give you the, the sound of tortoise shell plectrum without actually being made out of tortoises. 
Now, no, nowadays people you know, hate the idea of using plastics, but it's way, way better than using actual tortoise shell. Uh, so I got these pick, picks probably quite early on, let's say, in my playing, playing journey. Um, 0.96 millimeter. It's quite, a th uh, it's quite a like a stiff material anyway. So there's not a whole lot of give in that at 0.96 millimeter. Again, quite a shiny playing surface, but actually still reasonably grippy. You know, if your hands get sweaty, you don't need to worry too much about dropping it. Uh, it sounds like this. And I was perfectly happy with this pick, and I used these for years and years and years. Um, it got a good feel to it, um, hits the strings nicely, it's quite shiny, polished edge, so it glides off the strings really smoothly. And also being bright pink, if you drop one, generally it's fairly easy to spot where it's gone. So that was my pick of choice for a very long time. Uh, then, a number of years ago, I kind of saw people using, like, well, I guess what you call boutique ple uh, plectrums. Uh, became aware of people like Red Bear and whatnot, and it was kind of sort of on the radar, but I wasn't doing anything about it until uh, I went to a guitar show and I met one of the reps from Timbertones, and I came away with one of their their wooden plectrums. I came away with this one. So this is a quite a thick pick. pick. Um, it's solid purple heart, which is a, a exotic hardwood. Probably about two two and a half, maybe three millimeters thick. No give in it whatsoever. And it's got a really nice sound against the strings. And I kind of see this, if anything is like my gateway drug to really experimenting with picks, it was this Timber Tones pick. So I really like the way this pick feels against the strings, and it's it's got a sound you can hear um, really distinctively compared to other picks. Now I know a lot of people will say, no, the only thing that matters in an electric guitar is the pickups. It, it's not. There is something about the way the pick that hit, hits the strings, what it's made of, how much give it's got in it, um, how you're holding it as well, which is affected a little bit by the thickness and the material of the pick all affects the sound and certainly I've been in situations where I was, I was jamming with somebody he dropped a pick just using like a regular celluloid I threw him the timber tones one and he started using that and the sound actually was instantly better it was it, we were playing really loud there was no like hearing the sound of the pick hitting the hitting the strings just acoustically it was all what was coming through the coming through the speakers and you could hear the difference so the pick definitely makes a difference so that was the Timbertones pick, and I used that for quite a long time. And so, so that was sort of my, if you like, my gateway drug to experimenting with picks. And then I really got into promoting Fatfish a lot more actively, going around doing guitar shows and whatnot, and I wanted some promotional material, so I got some picks made. Now these were just really made most promotional items. They're just a standard one millimeter celluloid pick. So same as that, um, uh, that, that second pick that I talked about. A little bit thicker though, uh, but still got a bit of give to it. Slightly softer material than the, the Delrin that I was used to uh, previously. But I thought, having my own picks, my, I, you know, I need to use them. So I think a softer sounding uh, pick, a more mellow sound. Again, like I said, nowadays, I don't care for it so much because it's still got that, that little bit of give. So I played these for quite a while uh, more because I felt I should be playing my own picks. But then I realized, no, these are promotional items. Work, I should be playing picks 
that work well for me. Another guitarist that I know uses big stubbies a lot, so I thought, okay, maybe it's time to start experimenting with the Dunlop big stubby. So experimented with a few different uh, sizes of the big stubby, and I settled on this one, which is the two millimeter, the purple one. Now the big stubby is quite distinctive. It's made out of the same material that they use from uh, Bulletproof Glass. It's plastic called Lexan, very, very, very hard. And it's got quite a nice concave in the, the middle where your, your finger and your thumb go, so it's very easy to grip. It's got a little bit of texture to it with the logo in there, so you can you can grip it really nicely. It's a bit smaller than the picks I have been using, so despite the fact it's called the Big Stubby, it's actually a slightly smaller uh, profile than a, than a regular pick. But it fits very nicely in the hand, and this was getting back to what I was liking about the Timber Tones, that it's, it's a stiff pick, that it doesn't have any real flex to it. And it's quite hard, it has a very nice attack, I think, on strings. <laughs> So this was my pick of choice for, for quite a long time. I like the way it, fit, uh, way it feels. Now I know somebody like I say, who uses these and he can chip them away, but he's got a very, you know, quite easily in, in, in that, but he's got quite an aggressive, quite hard uh, picking technique. I'm quite, I've got quite a light touch. And to be honest, I never really had any problem with these wearing down or anything. It's like I said, it's, it's bulletproof glass material. It's, it's pretty sturdy stuff. Now there was another pick that I'd seen um, was the Dunlop Ultex, which is a really nice material, very, very stiff, unyielding material, quite hard, good attack against the strings. But I wasn't like mad keen on the shape, it was just a standard uh, pick size, whereas I was starting to get used to the big stubbies. Then I had the revelation that they actually make Ultex picks in the shape of the Jazz 3 XL. So this was kind of my next stop on the journey. Jim Dunlop Jazz 3 XL in Ultex. Really nice pick, again, very uh, hard material, very stiff, no real give to it, and similar sort of size to um, and shape to the big stubby. And I thought, when I got this pick, I thought, yes, I found pick Nirvana. It's the right sort of shape and size for me. It's a good feeling material. It's nice and stiff. There's no give to it. It's got a good grip to it. This is, this is ideal. Only problem I've got is, if you see the color of it, it's like a like buff sort of color, semi-transparent. If you drop it, it's really, really hard to, to spot where it's gone, particularly if it's bounced off into a dark corner. So that was the only real drawback. I love this pick and I'd spoke to so many people who'd kind of had this pick in their lives and said, oh yeah, that is, that is a great pick. And I played with it and, and I loved it. And then it's kind of just decided I'm gonna start experimenting a bit more with picks and went back to my, like my first sort of boutique uh, pick port of call, which was Timber Tones. And I tried a few picks from Timber Tones uh, some different materials just to see how I got on and kind of really dipping my toe in the water of what was out there in the world of boutique picks. So three I'm going to show you now, they never kind of stuck with me for a whole lot of time, but they did kind of influence how I was starting to think about picks. First one was this one, this is made out of horn. So I tried a few different thicknesses of the horn pick. Um, this is one of the thinner, as horn picks go, this is one of the thinner ones, but it's still actually quite thick little bit of a um, grip pattern etched into it and it's got a an interesting sound, a softer sound than perhaps I was expecting. Yeah, I thought pit horn was going to be be harder than it is. It's actually got a little bit of little bit of flex to this pick. 
the material is quite soft it hasn't got a really sharp attack on the on the strings and it was interesting but I knew pretty much straight away this is not the pick for me it's a long-term thing so staying with animal products next up was uh, this one this is made out of bone now this is a much much harder material than the horn uh, it's a beast of a pick uh, compared to once some other ones have been playing it's about three millimeters thick really chunky you know you've got a pick in your hand the thing I didn't like so much about this was the edges on it uh, it wasn't finished to a particularly sharp point uh, so what I have done with this is actually I dressed it down with a bit of wet and dry paper and then some polishing compound just to get a nice smooth edge but a, a slightly sharper point on it and I like the way this sounds it's got a very very hard attack on the strings So I like this and played it so off and on for, for quite a while. It wasn't quite the, the dynamic picking experience that I wanted, but it had a good sharp attack, which I liked and worked particularly well with the Strat. So that was definitely one that was on my radar and kept getting picked up. And there was another one from Timber Tones, which I played quite a lot and really enjoyed. So there's this one, this is made out of carbon fiber. Now this is much, much thinner than the uh, the bone pick. I mean, this is probably about 0.7 of a mil. Very th thin, but carbon fiber is such a strong material. So for all it's only 0.7 of a millimeter thick, it's got absolutely no flex to it whatsoever. It's absolutely rigid. Very hard material, good attack against the strings. So yeah, I had a lot of time for that pick and used it a lot. Then I remember watching a video where it was like a guitar builder I was showing the process of making a replacement nut out of carbon fiber. And he started giving all these warnings about, you need to be very careful when you're working with carbon fiber because the dust's really bad if you breathe it in. It's a really nasty thing to get into your lungs. And I just suddenly got a bit paranoid because I thought it was at four, ugh, I'm not seeing a lot of wear and tear on the edge of the pick. I can see it getting worn down. It's hitting the strings, there's gonna be this dust floating around. It's a tiny, tiny amount, not enough to worry about. But worry about it, I did. And for all, I loved the playing experience of this pick. Odd, actually, because it's so thin. Um, I thought I'd generally I prefer a thicker pick. I really enjoyed it, though, but I was just worried about that carbon fiber dust. Like I say, it's probably nothing, but I just, being a bit cautious, I thought, no, I, I'm gonna go around and look for something else. And it was about that point that I came into the world of gravity picks. So I tried a few picks from uh, gravity. The first one I tried was the uh, 003XL. This is basically the same profile as the Jazz 3XL, like that uh, Ultex I was playing before. But this in common with the, all the gravity picks, it's made out of acrylic. Uh, so very, very hard plastic. Um, now I played this for a little while. <laughs> But I just, for some reason, I couldn't get on with it. I think I've been playing picks bigger than the Jazz 3XL and I wanted something a bit bigger. So I settled on this one. So this is the Gravity Razor. So in terms of shape and size, it's like a standard pick. Uh, you know, like if you think of like a Tortex or those Dell and 500, something like that. It's got a slightly more pronounced point on it. Again, made out of acrylic. This is like a sort of glow in the dark, greeny yellow. So it's really easy to spot if you drop it and it's got a really nice feel in the hand, good sort of thickness to it. Nice tone, I like the way it hits the strings. Gravity do two different types of edging. They do like a highly polished one or they do a, a slightly rougher one that really grates across the strings a bit more. 
Personally, I prefer the smooth. I know other people who hate the smooth and prefer something slightly rougher. It's purely a personal preference, but the Gravity Razor that became sort of my, my pick of choice. And this is what I was playing until uh, I had the discussion with uh, with John Davidson uh, on that, that interview uh, that I did a few weeks ago. And he started talking about the different characteristics of pick and all the different boutique manufacturers that are, factories that are out there and it just sort of got me thinking well maybe I should maybe I should have a have a look around at what else is out there and I kind of sort of started to think about what, what picks have I played and what did I like about them so you know I like something that's it, it's not got any real flex to it it's, it's a nice stiff pick got a reasonable presence in the hand something quite thick something I can grip onto and certainly something John had said, he, you know, he's played hundreds and hundreds of different types of pick and like once you've gone to something a bit more thick and substantial um, in your hand, you, you kind of grip it differently, you've got, feel like you've got more control, a um, bit easier on the, actually on, on your wrist and the way you hold the pick, a bit more, uh, you know, a bit less strain on it. So kind of, I wanted to go for something a little bit thicker and I thought I want something that's got a bit of a harsh attack you know, I quite like that bone pick, you know, for all it wasn't quite the right profile for me, I like the sound of it. And I ended up going for one of these. So this is a pick from Howling Monkey Picks over in New York. And this is made out of taguan nut. Now taguan nut, it's a, it's a nut, it comes from palm trees. And it's not often known as nature's ivory, it's actually very similar to bone. But if you're vegetarian or vegan or whatever and you don't want to use animal products, Tagua nut is a, is a usable alternative. Personally, I'm, I'm not vegan or anything like that, but I thought, well, I'll give this a go and see how it sounds. And I'm really enjoying it. So I think this is going to be my, my pick of choice for, for a while. It's quite a thick pick, probably about three millimetres or so thick. Nice um, carved uh, grip on it. Lighter than I was expecting. Uh, available in different colours. I got red just because. Uh, but yeah, very nice pick. And I say one of the reasons I like it is it's it's, it's thick, unyielding pick. It doesn't bend against when you, when it, or flex when you hit the strings. And this is a point that kind of came out in that discussion that I had with John. And like I said, I urge you to watch the whole video because there's some really good points that he makes in there. But one thing he said was about the, the idea of a pick that, that doesn't have any give to it is you've got actually got more control. If you're, you're playing with a, a more flexible pick and you really want to start digging in, as you're putting more force into your picking, What's really going to happen is the pick's just going to bend more. Whereas if you've got a, a stiffer pick, you can pick lightly, but when you start to dig in, the pick's not going to give. It's going to move the strings more and it gives you a bit more control. You can almost think of it like playing with the thin pick is a bit like playing with a compressor, where you've kind of got a, a natural limit as to how much you can you can dig in before everything just kind of levels out and, and you get kind of like this uh, this this like capped level whereas with a stiffer pick where you dig in you're just going to get as harder you pick you're just going to get more volume and more dynamics so that's i think why i kind of gravitated to a thick pick because i like using dynamics in my, in my playing and i hadn't kind of put two and two together and realized that, that was why but a thick pick does give you that so there hopefully is some food for thought you know don't just dismiss the plectrum as being this humble piece of plastic. There's an awful lot of variety out there in terms of shapes and sizes and thicknesses and materials and, and, and textures and, and whatnot. There will be the right pick for you. It can be a complete rabbit hole. You can spend an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money looking at all these different boutique picks. But if you kind of think about what is it you want in a pick, what do you like about the pick that you've got now or picks that you've tried, what you like, what you don't like, and kind of start to, like with any bit of equipment, think about the strengths and weaknesses and you can kind of home in on a particular 
particular product. But certainly I would urge you to think about the material that the pick's made, you know, how hard it attacks the strings and how thick it is and how yielding or not it is and what that allows you to do in terms of picking dynamics. All the playing I've done today obviously has been on an electric guitar. Um, in the room you can hear more difference between the picks because you're hearing the acoustic of the sound of the, the, the pick hitting the string. What's coming out of the, the speaker and what you're hearing on the video, uh, possibly you're not, you're not getting that as much of it because you're not hearing that acoustic sound, but hopefully you can hear the, the difference in sound between some of the picks. YouTube sometimes does things with video, uh, the audio on videos, so you, it might lose some of the subtleties, but hopefully it comes across. When you get into playing acoustic though, it really opens up the potential of the pick to influence the sound of, of that you're getting from the guitar. So that's definitely something to think about if you, uh, if you play acoustic guitar as well. Okay, I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you did, please click like down there. If you really enjoyed it and you want to see other videos that are posted onto the channel, then down there there's a subscribe button. Please click that. You're welcome to leave a comment. Uh, I don't always see comments left on videos though, so if you've got something specific that you want to ask me, whether it's about you know picks or guitar equipment, guitar playing, music theory, anything at all, you're probably better off going here, filling that form in, sending me a question through there, it comes direct to me, so I'm guaranteed to see it and I can get around to answering your question in a future video. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in another video next time. Bye for now.